So taking control of your career. In my career at ExxonMobil when I first started, I was hungry, I was eager, young and ready to go. Had the jetpack on and everything. However, somebody failed to tell me, or maybe I failed to listen, that your career can go one of three ways, either to the sky, into the wall, or into the ditch. Some of the things that I might talk about might be career development one-on-one, but it's sometimes it's the easy stuff that we tend to forget. So if you're anybody like me that tends to actually uh, Google a lot about their career development, you would actually find that a lot of the career development blogs and also some of the actual presentations talk a lot about your probationary period, your first 60 or to 90 days. But little talks about anything about your one to maybe two to three year and what you're supposed to do after that. You might be asking yourself the question, how do I get myself from an actual apprentice level and go to an individual contributor or perhaps a leadership level? Understanding your role and how you play in it. This forces you to network. So not all the time will you have the actual resources available and not always are the people that you're working with in your projects are going to be all that helpful. I'll give you an example. When I was young in my career at ExxonMobil, I actually worked with a senior engineer and we were working on a project. We came across a problem and my first inclination was to actually try to come up with a brainstorming meeting. Well, one thing that I did wrong was I brought everybody to the meeting. I didn't try to figure out who were my key stakeholders. So then I had to ask myself the question, well, how do I make sure that I have the right people in a room so I can get the right ideas and then come up with the right path forward so I can make a good contribution to the team. So I had to basically come up with alignment meetings or pre-alignment meetings. So I had to actually basically put myself outside of my comfort zone and talk to each individual one and talk to them and ask them, what do you feel is very important to you for this project? Once I started doing that, I made sure that I actually realigned myself with my supervisor and also my senior technical engineer to make sure that I wasn't going outside of the bounds. And that's something that we actually need to be doing. This is what helped me. I asked five people who I emulated, who I really liked, and I thought they were really great uh, engineers. So how did you get to where you are? Coming from wherever you graduated from to now. Asking them, what did you like? What did you not like? And what would you go back to if you had to? And that way, I tried to pick out what I liked. And then I found I liked project management. So you want to make sure that a lot of people know what your aspirations are in terms of your career. And also, you want to make sure that they know all of your contributions. You may also notice that sometimes when you network, you also meet new people. You also meet new friends. You also take your career to new heights. And what I found was, that once I started branching out towards other departments, other divisions, as well as outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the plant that I was in, then I started realizing that my career was starting to actually blossom. It was actually starting to take off. Hopefully, you can actually take control of your career.